Uh, welcome to Macrecore Cargo System Insights. Today we are here in the Kalmar uh, test field in Tampere and uh, today we have a uh, question and answers uh, episode because we have got many uh, questions of Hippo from, from uh, our good customers and also, also internally in, in Macrecore. And here is Perto again answering hello. the questions. Hello, hello. And uh, let's start. Yeah. First question, uh, what is the function of wire and its material? Well, the uh, function of wire is to operate the uh, securing device that secures this lock to the bottom corner casting. And the wire, wire operates that, so pulling, then the securing device turns. And the material of wire and knob is a stainless steel. Uh, maybe we continue with this because there is also uh, asked that what uh, is there any servicing of uh, Hippo required and also uh, uh, there is some doubts because there is no moving parts so mm. how we handle that yeah understand well there is no uh, service needed basically because no greasing is required for the moving parts so no uh, regular service is required, so this is in that way maintenance free. Of course, uh, regular timely inspections of, of the lock, like all the other lashing equipments or equipments, is, is also recommended for this lock. Okay. So. It was also one question about the creasing, mm. or, or not actually not not for creasing, but uh, about the creasing. But uh, uh, is it so that it can it can collect the dirt in this part of the lock? Yes. Use? There was some question about the uh, gathering of the dirt inside and affecting to the moving parts. So, um, as said, this lock doesn't require any grease, so uh, there is no grease to which dirt could. Uh, connect to so we see that uh, it's not a problem with this lock and also the moving parts are uh, located in quite spacious space here there is much room so water can freely flow through and also this there is no small tight gaps where the uh, dirt might gather up. So. Okay, it's theoretically washable. Yes, okay. this is washable. By the way, what is the lifespan of the wire? Uh, the lifespan, we have tested this for 25,000 cycles, so 25,000 pulls before it breaks. So if we consider that handle is pulled twice per one week, so that equals up to some 240 years of use. Okay, so it, it, it lasts quite quite long. Yes. Uh, then a very uh, hot question. Uh, there is so many uh, forces what we are testing and mm -hmm. classes are testing and then we are uh, 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 talking about the uh, safe working load tension, brake load tension and then there is still slip out tension. Yes. What is the difference between all these terms? <laughs> Uh, yeah, we have safe working load for twen tension that is uh, 250 kilonewton. So that's a standard used also for semi automatic locks, and that is actually what the container corner casting tolerates. So, so that's the maximum allowed force for safe working load. So, okay, on so board, container cannot take more than 250. No, okay. no, this 250. But then we have this uh, brake load, uh, with, uh, which is uh, twice double the safe working load so that is tested by classification societies also so it's a tension load for the cones and 500 kilonewton means uh, that the lock has to endure that but it doesn't mean that it will break at 500 kilonewton it's mm. just a minimum the lock has to endure without breaking and then we have this slip out load which is coming from this testing of these automatic locks. They are tested in this kind of special chick. So in that testing, we have also tested the slip out. What is the force needed before the lock in, uh, dis disengages from the, from the container corner casting? So when it com comes out? Yes, okay. and we have reached 500 kilonewtons also for that. And it actually didn't come out even with this 500 kilonewtons. So okay. that is the slip load, slip, slip out load. Yes, yes. Okay. 
Uh, then there is a question about uh, trainings for stevedores and zip crews. Is MacGregor able to do that? I can also say that uh, we have very long experience of making crew trainings. We have trainers and we can do that also in the terminals. This is, this is no problem. And uh, maybe Perto, you can tell about the documentation we leave on the board of the ship. There are yeah. like we have here this kind of operating and instruction Main. manuals. And, yes, uh, we have operation and maintenance manuals. And then we have then we have this kind of videos so, to be shown. And also there will be uh, uh, instruction sticker uh, on the bins where the, uh, these hippologs will be stored. So there are many places you can seek information how to use and maintain this law. And there are QR codes, for example. Yes, possible. yes. Okay. These will be coming also. Yeah. Yes. Uh, then, good question. What is the price of hippo? This is, of course, a hot topic. And uh, let's say we are, we are starting now with this. So I will, I will say that it's somewhere in the range of uh, semi-automatic twist locks. So there is different kind of semi-automatic twist locks, which are uh, some are more cost efficient and some not. And this is somewhere there in the range. But we will see in the future where, where we land land but uh, but let's say that we are there uh, then what is the weight of hippo uh, it is uh, less than five kilos so it's it's quite light okay that, yeah. that's that's promising yes uh, then very good question actually that how uh, this kind of uh, symbol fully auto locks mm. uh, in the industry can, can they work together? So is, is it theoretically possible to mix uh, different makers, fully the, auto locks? The, yes, in theory it is possible as long as the uh, working principle of the locks is the same. And also the thickness of this flange has to be similar. So we have 50 millimeter flange here. So if the thickness of flange is similar and the working idea of the lock is similar, so then they can basically work together side by side. Yeah. Now, when you started uh, talking about the flange thickness, mm -hmm. uh, there is uh, questions about the uh, retrofits. So that if you want to change, uh, for example, semi-auto locks to fully auto locks on the sailing fleet, then uh, there is maybe required to make a 28 millimeter flange. Now we have 15. Yes. So. The bigger flange is needed because otherwise the lashing lengths can be different and that, that can affect on lashings. That's why that's why uh, thicker flange is needed. So what yes. is our uh, plan for yes. doing this kind of version of hip? Yeah, yeah. It is totally possible to make this kind of retrofit version of, of, of hippo. As you said, we need that in order to keep the keep the lashing lengths as they are if we are changing one vessel, all the locks from semi-automatic to, to this uh, fully automatic. So it means that the flange will be thicker, but otherwise the features and shape of the lock will be the same. So basically okay. that is totally possible and we have already been thinking of this. Yeah, yeah. as I understand, there is uh, some kind of pipeline. Yes, it is, it is in the pipeline, so yeah. it, is, it is coming. Okay. this retrofit version. Okay, uh, then the other uh, question, same same era. It, it, is it uh, uh, possible to have also bottom fully auto lock from the hippo? Yes. As I understand, we don't have it yet. No. But uh, but we are planning that. Now now we are using mid locks and, and bottom yes. manual. Yes, yes, yes. At the moment, our recommendation is to use the manual bottom locks with the, with the large flange and also mid lock in the ISO cap, uh, but but uh, it is also coming this kind of uh, hippo bottom lock version with the larger flange, so that is that is also in the pipeline and coming. Okay, very good. Yes, that was it this time, and uh, let's do the new one if, if more questions are coming. Yes, okay. so thank you, Berto. Thank you.